and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we're going to be taking a look at environmental text inside of Adobe After Effects. Now, Ian, what is environmental text? Well, the most basic explanation of environmental text is text or a graphic that fits seamlessly into the environment of your video by using tracking, masking, and effects rather than just sticking text on screen and calling it a day, because that's lazy. Check out this clip. We got this guy running towards a bridge, looks really nice, but there's just text on screen. It's not really doing anything. It's not moving. It's just kind of there. Yes, it's providing information, and yes, that's a lazy way of doing it, but that we don't do we do not do things the lazy way here at Learn How to Edit Stuff. Roll the clip again. Guy, running towards the bridge. We've got the text baked into the environment, tracked to the back wall. We're blurring it to help sell the depth of field in the camera. It is scaling as it gets closer to the camera. It looks so much cooler. And it's a nice little cool effect that you guys can do without much effort. So that's what we're doing today. Environmental text. It's going to be a way for you guys to kind of up your post-production game without putting that much time, effort, or energy into it, because it's actually fairly easy to achieve if you have the patience. You guys see this effect all the time. And the fact that you don't notice it is the reason why it's good. So if you're ready to learn, grab a cup of coffee. I got mine. Open up Adobe After Effects because we are getting started. All right, kiddos, down on my timeline, I've got the clip of the guy running towards the bridge that we want to bake some text into. Now, you guys are going to be working with a different clip. It's going to be something you shot, something a friend shot, something that you're just doing for fun for no reason. It's not going to be this exact clip, but all of the information contained in this video should help you to do some really cool stuff. So let's keep going. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to track the camera, especially if the camera's moving. Now, this technique will work even if your camera is not moving, and we'll get there in just a minute. So if your camera is, in fact, moving, we're going to come right over here to the tracker panel. We're going to click on our video clip and click track camera. It will throw the 3D camera tracker right on your video clip. It will analyze in the background. And as you can see, it is already off to the races. It is about 15% done right now. So why don't you go ahead, wait for that to finish and meet me back here in just a second. Welcome back. We are solving the camera. You are at the finishing stages of the 3D camera tracker and it is just finished. And now all of a sudden what you see all over your footage are these little colored dots. And as I'm hovering over it with my mouse, you can kind of see all these triangles starting to formulate and there's a little target that pops up on some of them. Now, what does that actually mean? The target is After Effects telling you what orientation the graphic or the text that you're going to be environmentally putting in the scene is going to be facing. So what you guys are going to want to do is you're going to want to find a target that is facing the camera. Now, if you wanted to put some text up here on this little overhang, you're going to want to find something that looks a little bit nice, maybe right there or over here, which looked really nice. This is where we're going to want to put our text because it's facing the camera. It's on the wall in which we want to track. So I'm going to single click on that point. You will see the triangle that it is creating. Creating. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that triangle and go to create text and camera, which will automatically put into our timeline a text layer and a 3D camera layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that text and I'm just going to stick it right up here on the wall. And what I'm going to do is orient this text in a way that looks a little bit nicer than what After Effects automatically generates. So by coming to my text layer, I'm going to click on R for rotation. It's already a 3D layer because we're working with the 3D camera. And I'm just going to tilt it up on the X axis right there. So it's standing up a little bit straighter. Now, After Effects is defaulting to whatever dumb font this is. So I'm just going to come up here to my text tool, double click on that text, and I'm going to find a text that I really enjoy. All right, we're going to go with the bold choice of DIN 2014. Excellent. So now basically what you're going to want to do is just kind of place your text in the area that you want it to exist. Now, right on top of this railing is exactly where we want to be. And I'm just going to leave it there for now. And instead of it saying text, I'm going to have it say run because we like to get clever here at learn how to edit stuff. OK, just going to make sure that my positioning of this text is exactly where I want it. That is looking pretty good to me right there. And now I'm going to pop out and check this out, guys. I'm just going to play this and it is automatically 3D tracked in our scene with the camera scaling as well as we're getting closer to the wall. It's absolutely incredible and we didn't really do much. We literally just tracked the 3D camera and did a couple little adjustments and it's already looking really good. And what's gonna sell your environmental text effect is paying attention to the environment that it's in. So if you guys really wanna go in, you wanna like get lighting down and you wanna get shadows down, mainly the one thing I can say is that the depth of field for the camera is really what's gonna sell this effect a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add a very simple blur to our run text. You can see the background is nice and blurry. Even the wall that it's on is very blurry. So this text being very crisp makes absolutely no sense. So we're going to come up here to effect, go to blur and sharpen, add a Gaussian blur. And right at the front of our clip, we are going to set a keyframe for the blurriness and we are going to crank this up 
I don't know, maybe 15. That looks pretty good right there. And all the way to the end of our clip, once we get closer, the wall is significantly more in focus. So now we're gonna blur this from 15 to maybe, I don't know, six. We still don't want it to be insanely, insanely crisp because the wall is not insanely, insanely crisp. So you're gonna want it to fit in as much as humanly possible. So now we're going from a 15 blur to a six blur over the course of time. And now that is just gonna sell the effect even more because it's matching the depth of field of the camera. Awesome, we're looking good so far, and I know what you guys are thinking. Ian, we gotta put a shadow down here on the ground. Of course we do, because it's environmental. Okay, let's keep going. I'm very simply just going to duplicate my run text by hitting Control D on the keyboard, and I'm going to hit R for rotation, and I'm going to rotate it all the way down so it's a little bit flat like that. We're gonna keep it absolutely flat. And now by holding shift and clicking and dragging, I'm going to move it onto the ground just like so. And we're gonna zoom in here a little bit. And I'm just going to mess with the rotation of this, mainly the Z rotation, to kind of get it to look like it is sitting on the ground where the shadow would be. Maybe right about there, I can mess with the Y rotation just a little bit, just to make it a little bit nicer. You guys can tweak this as much or as little as you want, but in the interest of time, we're just gonna call this done right now. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do now is now that I have my shadow layer on the ground, I'm gonna come up here and change the font color from white to black. I'm gonna uncheck this little stopwatch next to blurriness to get rid of the keyframes on our Gaussian blur. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crank the living shit out of this Gaussian blur so that it actually is appearing very blurry on the ground. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to experiment with different blending modes on this layer to really make it look like it is sitting on the ground. So overlay or soft light are the two that I would experiment with first. Soft light is looking really nice. It is a soft light, it is a shadow. So what I'm gonna do on top of the soft light is I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and just turn the opacity down just just a little bit so it's looking really nice on the ground there. And the whole point of this is that you don't really want it to be noticeable. So even now I still think the opacity can come down a little bit more. So I'm gonna turn it down to about 50% and you don't want it to be noticeable, but noticeable enough to where it seems like it is environmental. Now, if I click that layer on and off, you can kind of see what it's doing and it actually does sell it a lot. So I'm gonna play it, the shadow is on, and now I'm going to turn the shadow off. And it is actually doing a lot for us in our scene because it's selling the effect even more. So shadows and blurriness are going to be your best friend while you're doing environmental text. Now, you guys can take it a step further if you wanted to, and you can actually move the text over here farther towards our subject. And then when he crosses the, the text, you can actually mask out the text so that he is running technically in front of the text and that will help sell the environmental text effect even more. But that is going to take a tremendous amount of time for this tutorial. We are not gonna do that today. I will cover that in another lesson. But ladies and gentlemen, that is environmental text at its finest, at its most basic level. We used the 3D camera tracker. We made sure that we matched the depth of field as much as humanly possible. We experimented with shadows and blend modes and we got a really nice, cool looking result out of it. And it's only been, I don't know, like eight minutes. We didn't really put a whole lot of time and effort into this and we got a much better result than just sticking text on screen and being lazy and calling it a day. So with environmental text, you're really only limited by your imagination. You can do as much or as little as you want. Just make sure you guys are focusing your time and attention on the little details of trying to fit it into your scene, making it blurry, matching the depth of field, doing shadows, kind of making sure it fits in the environment that it's in, instead of just tracking it, sticking text on it, and moving on to the next thing. Now I had three different examples of environmental text to show you guys, but then I very quickly realized that this tutorial would be like six million years long if I tried to teach you guys how to do all of them, but I'm still gonna go ahead and show you the examples today. Here is a clip of some text inside of an eye. The eye blinks, the text changes. We're doing some particle effects in there, some fire and smoke effects, glow effects. We're doing some opacity things on the text. We're using all the same examples that I showed you guys in this video today, just in a different context. The text actually gets masked by the eye blinking, and that's when the text changes, but we're doing all of the same thing. We're blend moding, we're blurring, we're tracking, we're doing all of the same things, and it really does look cool. And here's another example of a chick walking with her cell phone, the little text message bubble pops up, she's walking by herself, that is terribly sad. I don't know where my mind is right now, but we're doing the exact same thing. All we're doing is tracking that cell phone by using the motion tracker instead of the 3D camera tracker and doing all of our same things, building out that little environmental text message bubble to make it fit 
into the scene. So you really are only limited by your imagination. And I guess also what footage you have in front of you. It's gonna be different for every scenario. Well, that about does it today for me, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I really hope that you guys learned something valuable about environmental text. And you're gonna go out there and stick some text in your environments and track and blur and all that stuff to your heart's content. Go out, have some fun. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the last video that you missed. I always say we do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff and then I get really busy and we don't end up doing it every week, but we're back on a consistent schedule. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Subscribe, check out the last video that you missed, and I will see you next time.